Great morning, God's people. Welcome to Famous. That's faithful and mighty, operating under your son. And I am your host, Sherry Bailey. It's wonderful, and I thank you so much for inviting me into your homes this Saturday morning. Um, last week, I talked to you guys about doing things a bit differently with Famous, um, adding segments and sh other parts to our show. But this morning, uh, we're going to do something a bit differently. I am so excited about my guest because he is indeed a living legend. You know, the Bible tells us when we need things, sometimes we ought to look right beneath our feet. And this morning, I'm going to do just that. I have an interview with Mr. Safir Rob, who is, among other things, the first black metallurgist to work at Eastern Stainless Steel. He's also um, served as the youngest captain of the FOI. He is currently the only black contractor on Embassy Row renovating um, the Cameroonian Embassy. And he is part of the reason I am the woman I am today. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna to go to the studio and introduce you to a living legend who is also my dad, Safia Rob. I wanna thank you all for tuning in and tell you we have an exciting hour for you. And I promise if you hang in there with us, we'll all leave better for it. Okay, so I'm entering the studio. Give me just a moment as usual, I have to set up. And there you see Mr. Roth standing. Okay. I believe I have us. <laughs> I think I have a good vantage point. Okay, so good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to say have a seat. And I'm going to say welcome to Famous which is faithful and mighty operating under the sun. Um, I explained to the audience before entering the studio that we have a, a, legend, legend, a living legend with us this morning. Um, black excellence is definitely in the building. Uh, this gentleman is Safia Rob. Uh, I'm not gonna go through his resume. I'm gonna give him the honor of doing that. Um, but I just wanna say thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome. Um, of course, I like to tell everybody, famous is faithful and mighty, operating under the sun. We always want to honor the Lord because he is uh, the beginning and the end of all things. So we honor the Lord by opening with prayer, and after that, we'll move on to the interview. That's all right with you? That's fine. Okay. So, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father God, it is in the awesome, wonderful name of Jesus that we come to you this morning thanking you. Lord, this is a new day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for waking us up with sound mind and body. Lord, you know all the evil, all the harm, everything that could befall us in our sleep and vulnerable state. And God, you kept us from that, and for that we say thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for just being who you are. We thank you for sitting on high and looking low. We thank you for snatching us from the clutches of the enemy. Now, Lord... We ask your forgiveness for every sin committed in word, thought, deed, action, and attitude. Forgive us, Lord, any time we've said something that was not pleasing to you. Any time we've allowed the enemy to take up residence in our minds and to steal your glory. Father God, we ask that you forgive us any thought that was not pleasing to you. Any action or attitude that was not a reflection of your love and influence in our life. Now, God, we invite you to inhabit this place today. Lord, your word tells us where two or more are gathered. You are in the midst of things, and God, we celebrate you this morning. We ask, dear God, that you pour your blessings out upon us, dear God. We ask that you take over this segment, Lord. Remove us, dear God, that you may shine through black brightly. Let someone's mind be touched, dear God. Someone's heart be changed, dear God. We pray for all these things in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. So, um, I, I explained to the audience that... Among being the first black metallurgist, 
Did I say that correctly? Yes. Um, and also being a captain of the FOI, yes. um, being um, the the only black contractor on Embassy Row currently doing a total renovation of the uh, Cameroonian Embassy. Yes. Um, among all those other great things, you are also my dad. <laughs> so, <laughs> we have a studio audience and the studio audience is clapping. This is my dad. Now, it's, uh, the Bible tells us to, when we need things, to look beneath our feet. And of course, this is Black History Month. And knowing all that I know about you, I think um, it is most appropriate to have you on the show this morning to share uh, so many pearls of wisdom that we, meaning my, my sister, siblings, and parents, and, and extended family, always have the great pleasure to um, enjoy. So I always like to begin, because this is famous, by asking you by uh, what makes you famous? Okay, what does famous mean? Faithful and mighty, operating under the sun. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I think that's an excellent question. Um, as you mentioned some of the things uh, in reference to my history, um, you picked it up after I probably entered into adulthood. And I like to go back to childhood. Sure. Uh, since it's a Black History Month, I'm, I'm a product of the 50s and the 60s. And um, desegregation was just uh, being instituted such that when I was in the kindergarten, I went to an all-black school. By that time, desegregation had kicked in, so when I was in the first grade, I went to a mixed school. Right. And um, my mother and father uh, didn't stay together, so because my mother moved, uh, I had to go to the school in the neighborhood where she was, such that uh, during that time, I've never been a product of any one school institution. I went to a different school every year of my life. Wow. Until I got to high school. Well, that's surprising. That's something I didn't know. That's something. Okay. Well, the summer was because transferring from elementary to junior high, so that would make a difference, you know, and then from junior high to high. But literally, every year, I went to a different school. Wow. Every, every grade. It started off because of desegregation. Okay. And, um, but I ended up going to uh, Baltimore Polytechnic. How? Oh. <laughs> which was uh, <laughs> wonderful school. Which I think, <laughs> I'm saying that because I think it says something about a black person surviving in America, uh, especially during this, this particular time. And I was allowed to uh, overcome the obstacles or whatever was the differences in those uh, different institutions. Right. And um, so. After that, I um, went to um, Community College of Baltimore as an engineer major, and I, I was introduced to uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who was a social reformer for uh, black people in America. Right. Having said that, during that time, I was a teenager, 17, 18 years old, and um, everybody was into something dealing with the social movement, either the NAACP, uh, CORE, SNCC, Black Panthers. Martin Luther King was at the height of his, as a matter of fact, Martin Luther King was assassinated when I was 17 years old. That's right. And uh, so he, I, I, I've got a chance to watch him my entire life uh, as he was being displayed on television. And um, I decided that I wanted to um, do something for my people as well. And I ended up uh, dropping out of college and going to work in a steel mill. I went to work in at Bethlehem Steel at the time, which was one of the largest uh, employers in Baltimore City. Right. And uh, I entered into an arm work as apprenticeship. But up until that time, this is another part of black history, no black people was in any of the trade unions right. until I passed the test. So I broke the union in okay. Bethlehem Steel. I was the first black to uh, uh, join what they call the Iron Workers Apprenticeship. They had black people in the union, but only as laborers 
and rigors. No doubt. Everything else was segregated to white. Well, you know what? That that in and of itself is a lot of information, Ken Jess. And you're a great interviewee because I, I guess because first of all I know you, <laughs> so I know the backstory. Um, but also just because I feel comfortable talking to you because these are many conversations that we've had over the course of my life and it just has been a blessing to me to learn all of these things about dad. Um, but I'm just going to rewind just a bit because we, um, I'm assuming all, all of these things and in in collectively are the things that you're saying make you faithful yes. and mighty. Those are the things that, are, that, that would qualify you for that, right? Yes. So yes. I know that you um, have a, a host of sisters and brothers. Yes. Um, what, uh, and I know that just being a, a, a product of a blended family, in other words, when you and mom got together, um, we all were um, a blended family. Yes. There were eight or more of us, and so that that makes for a unique situation in childhood. I also know that when you are a part of a large family, so to speak, birth order makes a big difference. Or wh whether you're first, some people think the first uh, born has it the hardest, and some people believe that the last born or the baby of the family is um, spoiled. I don't know exactly where you fall, fall in that order. Could you tell us where you fall in that order and how you think that affected you as a person, like your your ambitions or your abilities? I fell in the middle. Um, I come out of a, a family of 11 children, and I was number five. Mm. But the next older one that I came after was five years my senior. And the next two younger that came after me, one was one year and one was three years. So I felt like I was an older brother right. because I was the older of that, that group of three. So I kind of feel like I got a mixture. No <laughs> I'm in the middle, but I'm also the, the senior. And uh, that's kind of way it always went for me. Uh, it set the bar and uh, my my uh, my older brothers and sisters dropped out of high school at 16, so it's like the weight fell on me to finish high school. Right. And so I didn't want to be a bad example for my younger brothers. 